Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tom Quigley, bringing the latest tips, tricks, and techniques for all your contemporary painting and drawing needs. And welcome back to another video. Today, we're at the start of a brand new week, which means I've got so much more techniques, tips, and tricks to go along with your sketchbooks that you can bring into some final pieces. Now, the subjects of today's lesson is gonna be based around organic form. So anything that grows or is found in nature. Now, more specifically, what I'm gonna be showing you today, I'm gonna be showing you the easiest quickest and most effective techniques that you can possibly ever do. And these techniques are so simple, but really, really effective uh, within your sketchbooks and anyone can do them. Now, these techniques that I'm actually gonna be showing you, one of them, you're gonna need some washing up liquid. It's called a bubble technique. So you're gonna create a surface technique, which actually looks like bubbles. It looks really, really cool. And the second one, you might have actually seen it. It's quite a lot over social media, which is using the string and using ink. So I'm gonna be showing you how to do those. And more specifically with the matter of what it's gonna be on, it's gonna be on mount boards. We're gonna do some carving today. So you will need some, uh, uh, craft knives, mount board, and maybe some inks or watercolour. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking there and I'm going to get on with the video. See you in a minute. Okay, so we're going to dive straight into it. And the first thing that we're going to do is put a masking tape border around the edge. Now, I'm going to show you one of the easiest techniques straight away so you can see it. First of all, you'll need some drawing inks or watered down acrylic or watercolour. I've just used a blue and a red to make a purple. Then what you're gonna to need to use is some washing up liquid. Now the amount that you're going to use, I would say probably a tablespoon, but you don't need a lot to be honest. Then you'll also need a straw. Now what I'm doing now is just blowing through it. Just be careful because it can splash back and go all over your face, which is quite funny. But yeah, once you've got those bubbles on there, that is what's gonna go onto the page. You can see that I'm putting my book over the top of the bubbles and that's the effect that you can get. Now, I want you to do that a number of times around the double page. Here I've done another way of doing it, put the slicing onto a piece of paper and then dabbing it down. It works exactly the same way, to be honest. You can even use a plate if you want to do a large surface area. So after I've done that a few more times, I've started to collect some of these bubble techniques over the page and I've actually started to change the hue of the colour, added a little bit more red in there just so we've got some contrast within tones to make it a little bit more interesting. Now what you'll see that I'm doing now is the artist that we're looking at is Helen Wells. She seems to have these drips and splashes on her work. So I tried to incorporate that within the bubble technique. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to, but I thought it was quite a nice organic type of look. Uh, once you've dried it, I'm going to take off the mask and tape. Now we're going to talk about the title, Organic Forms. And instead of actually handwriting it, I'm going to be using a website called dafont.com and it's really good and the way I do it without signing up actually is find the one I want so I've typed in the word floral and after that I'm just going to type in the custom preview button I'm going to type in organic forms. Now once I've written that in there it's going to show me what the letter forms is going to look like. I've just screenshot my phone, cropped it down, emailed it to myself and then printed it out. And what I can do then basically, without actually writing the word organic forms, I can actually tear up the printed out image saying organic forms, and then place it on the page. Now, there's a slight difference. What I'm also going to think about doing is computer paper's not really the nicest to work on the top of. And we also want to work it out, make it look like we've done it ourselves. So if you glue it down, um, I've placed my organic on the top left hand corner there and then the forms on the other page. You can present it however you want to. Now once you've stuck those down, I want you to get a piece of card and some white paint. It can be used in emulsion, acrylic or maybe primer. I just want you to do a light scraping over the top of it. Now, number of reasons why we're doing this. It just incorporates it in the page. I could have done this before the ink actually, to be honest. So if you want to do that, you can. And also in some areas where I feel like the background is a little bit too strong, I've started to use that white paint just to take it back a little notch so it doesn't distract from the artwork that I'm going to put in over the top. Now, this is the first bit of artwork that I want you to do, just testing wise. Um, you'll need the mount board and I'm going to use some white paint over the top and just paint over two squares. I'll tell you why we're painting them white later on in the task. You're going to put them to one side, let them to dry, and then we're going to have a look, a closer look at the artist, Helen Wells. Now you can see she's using some purples and reds, which I've used, also some gold, and you see some patterns of organic leaves or um, maybe these kind of contour lines, maybe you'd see in wood. 
Now, the first thing that I want to do, just get some watercolour. You can use diluted acrylic if you want to. And what we're going to have a go at doing is just doing some very simple shapes. So I'm just going to be doing some circles, maybe some leaf shapes, and it's just going to be using some very watered down colour. Now, once you've done these and you've laid over a few lines to create your shapes, you can see there, you're actually going to be drawing over the top of it. So it doesn't really matter what shapes you create. They're just abstract organic shapes so i've done one there let that dry and then this one just using the purple and it's a Payne's gray um, i'm com combining it with uh, just to create some dark contrast between those and i'm doing exactly the same thing to be honest let that dry now i'm going to put some layers over the top of watercolor if you don't know how to use watercolor i'll put it up in the cards above so you can click on and see that video and see all the effects and techniques that i use within it so you can get a little bit more confident and i'm just putting some as i say just some lines in there some wet in wet techniques just seeing letting the paint do its job on its own here i'm just putting some darker tones in as you can see with Helen Wells's work, she seems to have these shapes that are overlapped of translucent colours, as you can see on the screen now. So I'm trying to replicate those within my own work, and then I'm just going to leave that to dry. And we're going to come back and we're going to be doing some drawing over the top of it afterwards. And you can see I'm just keeping working back into it, just seeing, as I say, these are just testers. Now, we're now we're going to go on to the string technique. Now, this technique is so simple. It's really, really simple, but it, my God, it's so effective. So what you'll need is you'll need some string. I've just used a little ramekin with some blue ink in there. Use the paintbrush just to soak it. Now, if you use too much ink, it's not going to come out um, as crisp as you want to. And sometimes you have to do it a couple of times. So I've just used a little bit of tissue paper. I'm going to place the string over the top of it just to absorb some of that ink. And it's important that you do that because otherwise it's just too much. Now I'm just going to place this in, it just, it's a random way to be honest. And you, the more you do, the more you'll learn. So I'll put a piece of paper over the top of it, then another board, and then I just put a firm pressure and pull the string out. So now there's a tendency sometimes the string can snap if you're pressing too hard. So just get used to it and see what you come up with. Now, my first attempt here is good. I like it, but you can see that it's a little bit too wet. So I've, what I decided to do is have another go. I've not put the string back in the ink at all. It's the same one they used before. And then we'll just see the effect. And that's more like it. So we've got these delicate lines coming through. And I've looked at left and right, which one seems to be the best one. And what you can actually do now is put string in another colour overlap it and so you'll get a multiple colors you can do this as many times as you want to and you'll get some really quite nice effects happening there so it's a great experiment now what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come back to the pieces of mount board that we painted earlier and we're going to be looking at cells so i've looked at some plant cells i've also got a coloring book as well these are really quite cool they're really good for inspiration and i've just photocopied some of the sheets from there and then i don't have to really draw them out or they're quite simple simplistic shape so easy to draw from rather than being quite complicated and realistic so i've started to draw my shape now and as I draw it, I'm going to talk about why I put the white paint over the top. Mount board paper isn't the nicest to work on. And we're going to be putting ink over the top of it. And the way it absorbs into the surface, um, it's just not really quite nice. So when we put the white paint on there, it will really hold the ink. Now, once you've drawn all your patterns out, again, this is just an experiment. We're going to carve into the surface. Now, you need to make sure that you've got a positive space. So I'm cutting both sides out there. And then what I do is actually peel up using the craft knife and take off that first layer, revealing almost like a pulpy layer underneath. Now this pulp layer is going to absorb the ink like a sponge and it's gonna go really dark. So wherever you cut out, you're gonna get some dark areas. So here I'm doing the opposite. Instead of cutting out the cells, I'm actually cutting around the cells. You could play, the, play around with negative and positive space. So as I continue to cut out these sections, please be careful. You are using a sharp implement. 
You don't really need to use a cutting board underneath unless you press really hard and you're only going through the top surface. Now I'll quickly move on here. I'm putting water over here. The reason why I'm doing that is that when I'm putting that ink on there, you can see it spreads and it bleeds throughout the piece of work and that's what you need to happen. Otherwise, what you're going to happen is you're going to have patches of coloured ink and it's not going to look as attractive. So what I've done here, I've just not done it in any particular way really to be honest. I've just had some dark and light areas just across the page. Now here's another piece that I did from the colouring book. Cut out a flower there. That's a filbert brush. I'm just going to use a bit of white paint and we're going to do some scumbling. And if you haven't seen scumbling before, again I've done that in another video which I'll put a link up below so you can know how to do it. And what I'm creating here is just almost these silhouettes of shapes. Again, just getting that contrast between dark and light it makes it a little bit more interesting. Now once that's dried, I'm working back over the top of it, maybe a little bit more refined now, doing some drawing. I've got a purple pen, which I thought worked quite well, and I've just started to look back at the cells and started to incorporate it around in the negative spaces, just to fill out those and make it more complex and interesting. And I'm also taking some lines and inspiration from Helen Wells' work to make my own design. Now we're coming back to these old drawings that we did previously now, they've dried, and I've just used a fine liner going over the top of them, creating these simple organic leaves, uh, which are really quite nice. Now, I actually went to uh, the forest the other day and took some pictures, and which I'll put on the screen in a second. And you can see that I've actually took a picture of some ferns and, and some other bits and bobs on there as well, which is quite of interest. So try and get sure you've got your own photographs if you can. It's always going to help you with your own design. Now, as I continue to work on this one using the black pen, I'm thinking what to do on the purple one. And what I noticed in Helen Wells's work is that she has these gold elements, which are quite nice. So I've got some gold ink. You could maybe use some gold acrylic um, or maybe even a gold pen, which would be quite nice. And I'm just working over the top, just in a similar way that she would do using these lines. You can't really see it from that angle, but if I just tilt it to the sun there and the light, you can actually see it just shimmer, which is just quite a nice added look to your piece of work. I've also added some white acrylic, just to add some extra contrast. Now here we're coming back to the title that we had before. Now it's dried. I don't know if you can see, I put some more bubbles over the top to try and incorporate it a little bit more. And then I'm just drawing over the top of it using a fine liner. So now it looks like my own writing, even though it's actually just a photocopy. So it's a little bit of a trick there, which might help you out if you are struggling a little bit. So as I finish that one off on that one, now we are going to start the final piece. Now, first of all, I've put some masking tape on here. On mine, actually, the ink went underneath it, so you don't really need to. But like just like before, we're going to put some white paint down just to secure the surface so it's a little bit more robust and also create that contrast when we cut into it and now I'm thinking about my own personal design so I'm looking at Helen Wells's work I'm looking at my photographs I'm also looking at the cells images looking at a number of things really to be honest you maybe do some more practices before doing your final one but I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes so as I work back onto my work now, putting those ferns in, also some of those shapes of leaves and elements from the colouring book in there. Um, I'm trying to think, I'm thinking to myself, that's a quite a nice design. And when I'm happy with it, then I'm going to start cutting it out. Now this takes a little bit of a time. Please take this. This is really, really precious, this area. And any imperfections will show up. So just take your time on that one. Now, as I keep on working back into it there, I'm also going to think about putting the water over the surface. And instead of using the purples this time, I'm going to change the blues. I'm going to use two different types of blues on this one. So I've almost got a thylo blue and an ultramarine. So it's almost like a greeny touch in there. And I thought that looked really quite nicely as well. Now, what I've done that I didn't do previously was make a stencil, which I've done a stencil of a fern. And I was doing that scumbling technique, putting the white paint. Just don't use a, use a lot. And that adds another layer to your piece of work just like Helen Wells would do. And now going back in with a black pen, putting some of those plant cells images, working out which areas would look quite nice within it. And I just keep on doing this until I'm completely happy with the final result. Now you could put some gold on there if you wanted to, or maybe some correction pen or fine liner, or maybe even some white gel pen. Uh, but I decided just to keep it relatively simple, but it's always nice to uh, do something a little bit different and keep on experimenting. So yeah, put those, some of those last little bits on there, ready to finish. I actually put a little bit of white gel pen on that one. And you can go over the top some areas as well. Don't feel like you have to stick in certain areas on there. You can overlap certain areas 
um, so there can be some contrast. Now, this is the last bit. We need to varnish it. Instead of using an expensive varnish, I'm just using some PVA glue. What you'll know that PVA glue dries transparent. Just be careful you don't use too much um, because it'll take longer to dry. So that's it, guys. That is my task. Well, that's it, guys, for another tutorial. Hopefully it was enjoyable. Hopefully it was informative. And if it was of value for you, please hit that like button just so I know that it was worthwhile, some of the techniques that I have done. And if you've try to have a go at some of these please tag me on instagram uh, sometimes i put things on there so if you're not following my other social media please head over to twitter facebook or instagram i tend to post some bits and bobs leading up to videos uh, that i just can't show on the channel anyway i will leave it for there until the next video guys look after yourself stay safe and stay creative until next time guys see you later bye